What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today what I want to do is go over how you can actually clean up the underscores theme and update all the globals, the functions, and the text domains of underscores and make it to our theme name itself. But I'm also going to show you some other tools and how to use bash scripting and some of the benefits of using git for version control. We're going to be using git diff, git restore, and some other git commands as well. First things first, if you want to support the channel, you can head on over to pixelmerb.com to WordPress themes and consider purchasing a copy of DevWP. I've been working on this theme for years and I've put thousands of hours into this theme itself. When you make a purchase, you get all the files, folders, and the documentation itself. Also take a look at some of our other videos and you can see how we've progressed over the years. Let's go to VS Code. All right, so here, you see I'm in my WP test folder. We are in the themes folder, underscores folder itself. We're looking at the readme.md file. I'll toggle this over here so we can see the preview. Over here in the quick start section, it's telling us we have to start searching for these values and replace it with our values. All right, so you can simply run a search in all files with either Control Shift F or Command Shift F, and you can put in one of those values, and it'll tell you where you have that located in. And then you can go step by step and start replacing them with the value you want. But I figured let me create another type of tutorial where we get more into bash scripting and then I'll show you some of the benefits of using git with git diff, git restore, and some other git commands. All right, so let me get out of there, x out of here. One thing I did was I created a search replace bash script file and this file on Windows, I put it within my user directory in the bin folder and you'll recall that in the WPC Alive video, the bin folder I placed it in my path. And this is where I'm putting some of my scripting files. On Mac OS, I do have a bin folder in the HC Docs folder, and that's in my path as well. All right, so what is this file doing? Well, there's a bunch of values that we have to take care of over here. I figured let's just create a script for this. So we're using the find command. We're searching for the type of files. We're looking for PHP files, CSS, SCSS, JSON files, dist files, text files, and the pot file. And while read file do, and then we're running this if over here. This is checking to see if you're on Mac OS, because if you are, then you have to have this empty string. If you're not on Mac OS, if you're on Linux or using git bash on Windows, then you don't need the empty string. You could just run these commands over here. Each one of these lines corresponds to the values that are here. All right, so now, let me open up my terminal. I'm going to change directory into, oh, first I'm going to check the git status. You see right now we're on a clean working tree. I'm going to go into the WP content folder, themes folder, then underscores. All right, so for here, what I'll do now, actually if you are on Mac OS, you'll probably need to use this over here, this command to make it executable. That's for that file. All right, so from here, I'll type out the command search replace .sh. If you already have the node modules folder in this directory and you have the vendor folder, you're probably going to want to delete those. So you could use the command remove space dash rf for recursive and force node modules and vendor. Maybe later on I'll adjust the script over here to just exclude those. That'll probably be easier. But for now, let's just do that search replace .sh. And let's see what happens. Let's see if the script works. All right, so you see it's processing. It goes through all those files and changes it out for us. And we see that we changed or modified 30 different files. So let's go into them. Let's go into those files. You see now we have devwp instead of the underscore s. And then for our text domains, we have that. Now go file by file, make sure everything is the way it should be. We have our variables over here have been changed as well. And another thing we could do is in our terminal, we could do git status and we see every file that's been modified. And if you want to see what's been modified in each individual file, you could type out git diff and let's say we're going to look at the style.css file. So you see what's changed. The underscore s has been changed to devwp. Over here, the description, what's in the code, blocks there, has been changed out for this. And if you see the colon in the bottom, that means you just press enter to see what's next. And you keep on doing that as you scan the file to see what's changed. And when you get to end, you press Q and it exits you out of that. So we see what's changed there. You can look at another file. And right there, the only thing that's changed is the package information. All right, so go line by line or go 
through each individual files if you want to check those out. You can see them all here, see what's been modified, make sure everything's still working. And let's say for some reason, let's say there was a mistake here. What can you do? From here, we could type out git restore and then all using the asterisk. Instead of going file by file, we could use the git restore all command over here. And now we see everything's been changed back. I'll run the search replace command again. We'll go through the process of processing those again. Go through the files. See if there's anything that needs to be corrected. But if everything looks good, you can run git status and you can commit those changes. There's a couple of other commands that I'm going to introduce you to because I know there's things that we've missed out on. So the next one's going to be the find command. Let me clear the screen. So in that folder, the underscores folder, I'll type out find space period for the current directory dash type file and execute it. Then I'm going to use grep dash capital H N W capital F. And then I'll put the same quotation mark underscore S same quotation mark. Then I'll put those braces right there and the plus sign. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking recursively in all of these folders and files to see if there are any other underscore S references that need to be taken care of. And there are going to be some and I have to adjust the script and I'll place a copy to the script on my website and I'll leave a link to that in the description area below. But by typing this out, I'm searching recursively inside of all the files and folders in this folder here. And I'm also going to output the line number. So let's hit return. So it tells us where we still have references to this. We see in the languages folder in the underscore s pod file, we have the underscore s right there. In the readme file is the other file. So we took care of a lot, but we have references still in the readme file. Another command that's very similar, we could just use grep dash capital R, capital H, NWF, and just the single quotation mark, underscore s, and then single quotation mark. Now it's basically the same as the command above. But here we use the recursive as well. And let's see what comes up. And the same information comes up. So in the, inside that language folder in the underscore s pod file, we have it there. And the rest of them are in the readme file themselves. But there's nowhere else in this theme that we have to resolve those issues. All right, so that's good. Let's go here. What else would we need to do? We have to rename the underscore s dot pod file, right? So we could do that. Let's change directory into language. We could type out ls dash leh. See what we have there. We see we have the underscore s dot pod file. We could use the move command, which also renames things. Underscore s, I'll use tag completion to dev wp dot pot. I believe that's what it wants us to change it to. Yes. So now we're moving that. So now we have it as a dev wp dot pot file. But that only took care of the folder name itself. All right, so now what else do we have to take care of? Let's take a look here. We have to take care of all the links and we have to take care of this actual readme file. All right, so here we'll just replace this right here with dev wp. Same thing here, same thing there. Make sure to take out all the underscores except for the one that follows your theme name because that's going to separate it for the functions. So we have it correct there. That's correct. This is for the constants. All right. I'll go back up a directory and then I'll run those commands again. All right. So you see now it's renamed that file, but we still have that here. So we could open this file up and this file we could actually take care of when we regenerate the pot file. So I'm going to leave it the way it is for now because we'll just regenerate the whole entire file when we use the dir archiver or when we use the make pot file. All right. So where else? Here we have it on the third line right there. We have it right here as well and here. So this line will just replace one search. But before we replace all, let's make sure we're replacing the correct things. And we are. So now we can replace all. Save that. Let's run that command again. So we should only get this one listing right there. And that's all we get. All right, so we're good. Again, we could type out git status. We see it's untracked there. Let's create another terminal window. And as long as everything looks good to you, to me they look good, I will commit this. So git add all and git status again. These are ready to be committed. So git commit dash m inside the single quotation marks. I'll say renamed files, functions, and other underscore s 
references to DevWP. I'll use one of my aliases for get status and it says that everything is good. We're on a clean tree. And again, just go down each and every single one of the files just to see what's changed. You could use the git restore if you made a mistake. And if you wanted, you could have actually made a branch just to test it out. And if everything looked good, then you could have just merged those changes. But I'll show you how to use git branch and git merge in an upcoming video. All right, so basically we took care of all we needed. Just as a recap, I created this bash scripting file and I placed it in my bin folder in my user directory. That's already part of my path. If you want to learn more about that, you can check out the WPCLI video that I created. And I basically just went looking recursively inside of the folder, the underscores folder, and changing out the values that were referenced over here. Now, once you're done with this whole entire tutorial, what you can do is do the same thing, but instead look for these references of DevWP because you're going to want to name yours to match what your theme name is going to be. And you will replace the references of DevWP here with your theme name. All right, so hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you understand it. I will place a copy of this script on my website and I'll leave a link in the description area. And if you can, consider supporting the channel by purchasing a copy of DevWP. You'll get all the files, the folders, the documentations, and it really does help this channel. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon, and I will catch you in the next video. Happy coding.